Malalaman ninyo ang katotohanan, ang katotohanan ang magpapalaya sa inyo. I am not the healer. Jesus Christ living in me is the healer. He is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Kung hindi siya magdududa sa kanyang puso, sa halip, bagkos, mananampalataya siya ng sinasabi ng kanyang bibig ay mangyayari. In living in the last days, you have to ensure your eternity. Prepare for eternity. teksto ng ating uh, anniversary message ay makikita sa John chapter 10 verse 10 Let us read please The thief does not come except to steal to kill and to destroy I have come that they may have life and that they may have it more abundantly Anong sabi sa 1 John 3:8 New King James Version Bible please he who sins of the, is of the devil, and for the devil has sinned from the very beginning. For this purpose, the Son of God was manifested that he might destroy the works of the devil. Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God, was manifested to destroy the works of the devil. What are the works of the devil? To kill. Paikliin ang buhay ng tao, magdala ng sakit, karamdaman, Tuksuhin ang tao na kumain ng mga pagkain nagdadala ng cancer, ng lahat ng klase ng sakit. Ano pa? To, to, to steal. To steal the joy, the peace, the happiness of the family. To sow stripes and divisions. To sow rebellion. To disturb the tranquility of the family of God. Yan ang uh, trabaho ni Satanas. To steal, to kill, pumatay, at magnakaw, at mag, uh, uh, to steal, magnakaw, pumatay, at magwasak ng buhay. Pero ang ating Panginoong Yesu Kristo nagpunta sa lupa para magbigay ng buhay at ng kasaganaan ng buhay. Jesus said, I came to give life and have it more abundantly. Naalala ko, ito, itong, itong abundant life nito, galing to sa salitang Zoe. Ibig sabihin ng Zoe mismo, victorious, prosperous, successful, glorious life here on earth. Praise the Lord. Zoe life. Ngayon, ang aking message, gusto kong gawing specific. Faith and obedience are the twin keys to abundant life or abundant living. Kasi ang tanong, Bakit maraming tao hindi maranasan ng abundant living? Ano ba itong abundant living? Sabi sa dictionary, yung ibig sabihin ng abundance ay ang ibig sabihin uh, beyond sufficiency. Beyond sufficiency. Ang uh, ang abundance ay umaapaw na blessings. Umaapaw na pagpapala. Eh bakit hindi maranasan to ng maraming anak ng Diyos? Marami hong dahilan. Pero akin hong social katin sa inyong isang teaching, faith and obedience are twin keys to abundant living. Ngayon, paano natin ma-visualize ma, ma o maintindihan ang kabuuan ng abundant living? E ang Diyos napakabuti at napakarunong eh. Hindi niya kinalimutan sa Bible yung 3 John 2. So New King James Version Bible, Beloved, I pray that you may prosper in all things and be in health just as your, as your soul prospered. Makikita natin dito ang complete, complete uh, blessings. Kasi ang tao ay binubuo ng spirit, soul, and body. Ang human, human being is a triune being. As God is a triune being, one God with three persons, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. Yung sinasabi sa Matthew 28, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Yung sinasabi sa 1 John chapter 5, verse 7, sa King James Version Bible, there are three that bear record in heaven, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost, and these three are one. Who, what is this Word? In John chapter 1, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was 
God. In verse 3 and John chapter 1, everything was created by Him and through Him and for Him and without Him, nothing can be created into existence, simplified version. In verse chapter, verse uh, 14, chapter 1 and John, this word, who was God, became flesh. And we have seen His glory as the only begotten Son of the Father, full of grace and truth. So, makikita natin ang reality ng Holy Trinity. Ang tao ay, ay, ay tryon being din. Binubuo tayo ng spirit, soul, kaluluwa, at katawan. Ngayon, yung tinatawag na abundant living, abundant, abundantly blessed, or abundant life, or abundant living, binubuo ng mga blessings na kumakatawan dito sa tatlong uh, tatlong uh, parte ng, ng, ng buhay ng tao. Spiritual blessings, mental blessings, and physical blessings. Physical blessings includes financial blessings. Gusto ba ninyo ng abundant life? Everybody say, faith and obedience are the twin keys to abundant living. Bakit ito sinabi sa contextualized revelation ng Bible? Faith. Faith is so important because it is impossible to please God without faith. He that cometh to God must believe that He is and He is a rewarder of them who diligently seek Him. Hebrews chapter 11 verse 6. Ano man ang possession natin, Gaano man tayo karunong, gaano man tayo kaganda, ano man ang ating uh, possession, kapag wala tayong tunay na pananampalataya sa tunay na Diyos, ang Diyos ay hindi maaaring matuwa at magalak sa ating buhay. At tandaan ninyo, kapag ang Diyos ay hindi nagagalak at natutuwa sa inyong buhay, si Satanas ang natutuwa sa inyong buhay. Kaya we should desire to please the Lord. And the, and the number one outstanding uh, scriptural support in the Bible, we can please the Lord once we develop our faith. Because it is impossible to please God without faith. Hebrews chapter 11 verse 6. In James chapter 1 verse 6 and verse 7, let him ask in faith, nothing wavering, for he that wavereth is like a wave of the sea driven by the wind and tossed. Let not that man think he shall receive anything of the Lord. Kapag wala tayong pananampalataya, ay para tayong, uh, uh, para tayong wave, para tayong uh, alon sa dagat, kung saan umihipang hangin, ay doon pumupunta. Huwag isipin ng taong yan na meron siyang matatanggap na anumang bagay mula sa Panginoon. Faith. Masyadong mahalaga ang faith. For by grace, you are saved through faith. This is not of yourselves. It is God's gift. It is not of your works, lest anyone should boast. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 8 and verse 9. Sa biyaya, kayo ay nangaligtas sa magitan ng faith, ng pananampalataya. Hindi ito dahil sa inyong sarili. Ito ay kaloob ng Diyos ng walang bayad. Hindi dahil sa inyong mga gawa upang ang sino man ay huwag magmapuri. Kung tayo maliligtas sa magitan ng mabuting gawa, mapupuno ang langit ng mayayaman, mapupuno ang impyerno ng mga may hirap. Kung tayo ay maliligtas sa mabuting gawa. Bakit? Mas maraming pera, madaling gumawa ng mabuti. Makapag-aabuli ka sa may hirap, sa mga orphanage, sa mga eskwelahan, sa mga hospitals, makagagawa ka ng mga proyekto para magbigay ng trabaho sa maraming tao, Mas marami kang pera, mas marami kang magagawang kabutihan kung ang tao ay mabu- ma- maliligtas sa magitan ng mabuting gawa. At pagdating ng langit ng mga taong naligtas sa mabuting gawa, nakataas ang kuhelyo, ubod ng yabang, at sasabihin, Jesus, kaya naman kami napunta sa langit, abo, mabuting tao ako, marami akong napagawang mga eskwelahan, mga orphanages, marami akong natulungang may hirap. Kaya mabuting tao ko. Dapat lang handito ko. Hindi dahil namatay ka sa krus ng kalbaryo. Hindi dahil iniwanan mo ang kalangitan at nagkatawan tao ka mula sa anyong Diyos at, 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 tinang, at, at, at tinanggap mo ang supreme sacrifice in the history of mankind. Hindi ganon. Pwede mo sabihin yun. 
Pero kaya nga sabi ng Bible, hindi dahil sa inyong mga gawa upang ang sino man ay huwag magmapuri. Tayo po'y mga ligtas lamang sa magitan ng busilak, dalisay, na pananampalataya. Nung tuwing mahal na araw, inaalala natin yung seven last words. Ang isa sa mga last words na yun, eh yung nakabayubay si Yeso Kristo sa Cruz ng Kalbaryo, nakapagitan siya sa dalawang tulisan, dalawang magnanakaw. Ang sabi ni San Tulisan, kung ikaw ay tunay na anak ng Diyos, bumaba ka dyan sa pakakapako mo sa Cruz. Iligtas mo ang sarili mo at iligtas mo rin kami. Ang sabi ng isang tulisan naman na magnanakaw, bakit ka nakapagsasalita ng ganyan? Bakit ka nakapagsasalita ng ganyan? Alam mo naman ang taong yan ay walang kasalanan. Tayong dalawa, dapat lang tayong mamatay sa ganitong kayayang kamatayan. Sapagat guilty tayo, napakarami nating kasalanan. Napakarami nating pandarambong at pagdanakaw at kasamang ginawa. Pero yung taong yan, alam mo naman walang kasalanan yan. Bumahaling yung taong yan kay Jesus. Panginoon, alalahanin mo lang ako pagyating mo sa iyong kaharian. Isang simpleng salita. Anong sagot ni Jesus? Sinabi ba ni Jesus, titingnan ko kung maalala kita? Hindi. Hindi rin sinabi ni Jesus, eh hindi ka pa nakapaglalakad ng paluhod sa loob ng simbahan? Hindi ka pa nakapagbibigay ng abuloy sa simbahan? Alalahanin kita? Yung ba ang sagot ni Jesus? Hindi. Nang marinig ni Lord Jesus, yung isang simpleng pananalita, Panginoon, alalahanin mo po ako pagyating mo sa iyong kaharian. Nung marinig niya ang isang simpleng salita, punong-puno ng pagpapakumbaba. Punong-puno ng pagtitiwala, punong-puno ng pananampalataya, ang sagot ni Jesus, ngayon din kakasamahin kita sa aking paraiso. For by grace you are saved through faith. It is not of yourselves, but it is God's gift. It is not of your works, lest anyone should boast. In Titus chapter 3 verse 5, hindi sa mabuting gawa kayo nangaligtas, kung hindi sa biyaya ng Diyos kayo na born again, nagkaroon ka ng spiritual regeneration. Titus chapter 3 verse 5. Kaya nung tanggapin natin si Jesus bilang tunay na Panginoon, tinanggap natin siya dahil nagkaroon tayo ng knowledge, knowledge of truth, na lahat ng tao ay nagkasala Romans 3.23 All have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Nalaman natin ang Romans 6.23 The wages of sin is death. Ang kabayaran ng kasalanan ay kamatayan. Sapagat lahat ng tao ay nagkasala, ang lahat ng tao ay merong death sentence. Subalit ang regalo naman ng Diyos ay buhay na walang hanggan kay Kristo Jesus. Romans 6.23 But the gift of God is eternal life through Christ Jesus. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, whosoever believeth on Him should not perish, but have everlasting life. John 3.16, the central text of the Holy Bible. John 3.16, gayon na lamang ang pagsinta ng Diyos sa sanlibutang makasalanan, ibinigay niya, nirigalo niya ang kanyang kaysa isang bugtong na anak upang ang sino man na sa kanya'y sumampalataya ay huwag mapahamak kundi magkaroon ng buhay na walang hanggan. Kailan naintindihan natin? Ano ba ang ginawa ni Jesus sa krus ng Kalbaryo? Siya na walang kasalanan ay ginawang kasalanan upang sa kanyang kamatayan, kayo at ako na ipinanganak sa kasalanan, na buhay sa kasalanan, ay magawang katwiran ng Diyos kay Kristo. So 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 21, Jesus Christ, when He became flesh and died on the cross of Calvary, He knew no sin but was made sin for us so that we can be made as the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. 2 Corinthians 5, 21. Madaling salita, yung spiritually, Nakita natin si Jesus ang nagkatawan tao na matay sa krus ng Kalbaryo. Walang bahid kasalanan ng kanyang dugo. The only blood on the surface of the earth. The only blood in heaven and in earth na walang bahid kasalanan. Sapagat pinanganak siya ng isang birhing babae. Hindi pa, nasisi, hindi pa nagsisiping bilang mag-asawa si Jose at si Maria. Si Blessed Mary ay nabuntis na si Blessed Mary by the power of the Holy Spirit. Kaya ang dugo sa, 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 sa katawan ni Jesus is the blood of God. No original sin. No, no any stain. Kaya yung blood na yun, ang kordero, yun, yun, yun ang dugo na siyang tangi, one and only, na nakapag-aalis ng kasalanan ng lahi ng tao. The inherited sin from Adam and Eve and the committed sin 
Yun ang nag-aalis ng kasalanan ng tao. Na kapag kinilan natin si Jesus, na kaya siya namatay sa krus ng Kalbaryo dahil sa ating kasalanan, ay e binubuo niya ang kanyang banda na dugo at pagkatapos siya ay nilibing at nabuhay na maguli. Pagkatapos ng tatlong araw, He rose up from the dead for our justification. We, when we come to understand the significance of the incarnation of Jesus, the death of Jesus on the cross, and His burial, and His resurrection, when we fully understand that, and then we acknowledge Him as our Savior, we believe the word of Peter in Acts chapter 4, verse 12, there is no any other name given under heaven that man can be saved except the name of Jesus. Acts chapter 4, verse 12. If we believe and acknowledge the word of St. Paul in 1 Timothy chapter 2, verse 5, there is only one God and there is only one mediator between God and man, the man Christ Jesus, the begotten Son of God who became man. And if we believe the word of John the Baptist in John chapter 1, verse, uh, verse 29, behold, He is the Lamb of God pinpointing to Jesus. He is the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. Hallelujah. If we believe that Jesus is the only Savior of humanity, He died for, for us, not for Himself. And we acknowledge His, His Lordship. Whosoever confesses with His mouth that Jesus is Lord and believes in His heart that God has raised Him from the dead, He will be saved. Romans chapter 10, verse 9 NIB version. Then after understanding all these things, and we release our faith, we release our faith, that is the time that we will be saved. Why? Because the Holy Spirit will enter into our human spirit. When we receive Jesus, automatically, after repenting of all, of all our sins, and receiving Jesus, meaning to say, acknowledging His supreme sacrifice on the cross of Calvary, automatically, the holy blood of Jesus, which was sacrificed by the Lord Jesus on the cross of Calvary through His vicarious death on the cross of Calvary, the, that blood will, will operate to cleanse you, to cleanse me from all kinds of sins, inherited and committed sins. And simultaneously, the Holy Spirit will operate the unction of the Holy Spirit. Our human spirit, which is dead, will suddenly be made alive, will be regenerated, by the power of the Holy Spirit. And that is born again. Born again. Once we are born again, we are becoming immigrants of heaven, receiving the right and the power to become children of the living God. Let's give God one applause for that. <laughs> Hallelujah. John chapter 1 verse 12 and first John chapter 5 verse 11, please. I just want to complete the spiritual blessings before I go to physical and financial blessings. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Everybody read. But as many as receive Him, to Kanya, to them He gave the right, the right to become children of God and to those who believe in His name. Yun lamang tumatanggap kay Jesus, hindi yun nagmembro ng anumang relihiyon. Yun lamang tumatanggap kay Jesus ang pinagkakalooban ng karapatan, right to become children of God. Maraming tao tumatawag sa Diyos ng Ama namin, Ama namin, siwa sa langit ka, sambahin ang alam mo. Tumatawag sa Diyos ng Ama namin, Ama namin, nakikiama, hindi naman anak. Magiging anak lang tayo ng Diyos yung kung ang kaisa-isang bugtong na anak ng Diyos ay tatanggapin natin sa ating puso bilang tunay na tagapagligtas at Panginoon ng ating buhay at Diyos ng ating buhay. Bibigyan tayo ng immigration paper, hallelujah, magiging immigrant tayo ng heaven. At kapag tayo naglingkod ng may katapatan sa Panginoon, pagharap natin kay Jesus, the sweetest words, Matthew chapter 25, verse 21 or, and verse 23, Well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful with few things. I will make you a ruler or in charge of many things. Come now and enter into the presence of your master. Matthew 25, verse 21 and verse 23. The sweetest words. Pero kapag hindi, tayo naging mali, ma, pag hindi tayo naging matapat sa Panginoon, naging disobedient tayo, nilamon tayo ng pride, nilamon tayo ng covetousness, love for money, love for position, nilamon tayo ng Lucifer spirit at naging instrumento tayo para wasakin ang gawain ng Panginoon. Ay, anong sabi ng Panginoon? 
on that day a multitude of people will come to me and they will tell me Lord Lord why did you close the door of heaven to us we have been calling unto your name we even prophesied in your name we even cast out demons in your name we even made miracles in your name Lord why did you close the door of heaven to us and Jesus said to these people in Matthew chapter 7 verse 21 up to verse 23 I will tell these multitudes of people get out of my sight get out of my sight I do not know you not everybody who calls me Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of God. Only those who obey, only those who obey the will of my Father in heaven. Beloved people of God, salvation is a free gift by grace of God through faith. But remember, it is a free gift that you receive and I receive. But there is a price to pay to protect the free gift that we received from the Lord. Those who overcame until the end, Jesus said, I will dress them up with white and I will, I will not blot out or erase their names from the book of life. And I will present them to my Father and to His angels. Revelation 3.5. Revelation 3.5. Anong sabi sa Hebrews chapter 6 beginning verse 4? Please. It is impossible for those who have once been enlightened, nagkaroon na ng kaliwanagan, who have tasted the heavenly gift, the gift of eternal life, heavenly gift, who have shared in the Holy Spirit, unction of the Holy Spirit. Verse 5, who have tasted the goodness of the Word of God, the Word of God, the incorruptible seed behind the born-again experience. First Peter chapter 1, verse 23, the incorruptible seed, the Word of God, and the powers of the coming age. Verse 6, if they fall away, if they fall away, it's impossible for them, if they fall away, to be brought back to repentance because they're lost, because to their loss, they are crucifying the Son of God all over again and subjecting Him to public disgrace. Kaya, tandaan po ninyo, may nabuburang pangalan sa aklat ng buhay sa langit. Kapag tumanggap tayo kay Jesus, tinanggap natin si Jesus bilang tunay na Panginoon, tagapagligtas, ng ating buhay, nakalista tayo sa book of life. Pero there is a possibility na yung book of life na yun, mabura yung ating pangalan sa aklat ng buhay sa langit. That's why we have to remain faithful and overcomer until the end, until the second coming of Jesus, until the rapture of the church, the first phase of the second coming ng ating Panginoon. Amen? Palagpakan natin ng Panginoon. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. So, spiritual blessings. Is it the will of God for you to have an abundant life? Historically, before God created man in Garden of Eden, God created Garden of Eden, God created everything in this universe, everything needed by man was created first by God before He created the last creation, the last creation, uh, in, the, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the sixth day of creation, He created man. Nilagay niya sa paraiso. Walang gutom, walang hirap, walang sakit, walang karamdaman in perfect condition. That's how God is. The perfect will of God is to bless His people to the fullest, with abundance, beyond adequacy, beyond limitation, beyond sufficiency. That's the perfect will of God. Nung bumagsak si Adam and Eve sa kasalanan, napailan na susumpa ang lahi ng tao, still, makikita mong amazing grace ng Diyos. He blessed Abraham. He blessed Isaac. He blessed Jacob. He blessed all the descendants of Abraham with overblowing blessings. And he even said, in Deuteronomy chapter 8, verse 18, Remember your God who gives you the power to get wealth. In other translation, remember your God who gives you the power to produce wealth. Deuteronomy 8.18 Is abundant living the perfect will of God? Is spiritual blessings, physical blessings, physical? Physical? Nakita natin yung si Jesus Christ, yung uh, yung, yung hindi pa nakakatawang tao si Jesus, nagkaroon na ng prophecy si Isaiah. Isaiah chapter 53, uh, 
Isaiah chapter 53, verse 5. He was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was laid upon Him. And by His stripes, we are, we are healed. In the future event, nirebuild na ng Panginoon. By the stripes of Jesus, you were healed. Kaya sa Psalm 103, verse 1. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and, and all that is within me. Bless His holy name. In verse 2 and verse 3. Bless the Lord of my soul. Forget not. Forget not. Forget not all His benefits who forgives all our sins, all your sins, and who heals all our diseases. Not some, not many, who heals all your diseases and redeemeth your life from all kinds of destruction. Wow. This is the God we are serving. There is no any other God like Him. You can study all religions under the sun. No one can, can come near to the greatness and awesome power of the God of Christianity. You're so blessed. Amen? Palakpakan natin ang Panginoon. Amen. Hallelujah. I'm laying down the foundation before I, I go to conclusion. Is it God's perfect will for you to be saved? Of course. There are many scriptures in the Bible proving it is the perfect will of God for every human being to be saved. One of them, of course, the number one of them is 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 9. Ano pong sabi? Let's read. The Lord is not slow in keeping His promise as some understand slowness. He is patient with you. Not wanting, say one translation, not willing. Not wanting or not willing anyone to perish, but everyone to come to repentance. It is very clear. The perfect will of God is for all, all, not some, not many, all human beings to be saved from hell. To be saved. That's why God wants all people to go to heaven. But every day people die and go to hell. That is, that is not the perfect will of God. The perfect will of God is for all human beings to be saved. But what is happening is the permissible will of God. There's a great difference between perfect will of God and permissible will of God. God is not a dictator. He wants you to be saved from hell. But if you want to go to hell, He cannot do anything. Because He respects the free will of every human being. He wants to bless you. But if you refuse to obey the prescriptions of God to be blessed, He cannot bless you. God said in Deuteronomy 28, if you fully obey, if you fully obey, if you fully obey all my commands and carefully follow, carefully follow all my commands, I will exalt your nation above all nations of the earth. I will command the coming of the blessings to you and blessings will overtake you. You will no longer borrow, you will no longer beg, but you will end. You will no longer be the tail, but you will be the head. Your enemy will come to you in one way and they will run away from you in great fear and terror seven ways. If you fully obey and carefully follow all my commands. Yung, yung, yung magwawakas ako doon sa, isang, sa huling aspeto. Yung unang aspeto, spiritual blessings. Yung pangalawa, physical, physical, healings, healings. Pangatlo, financial. Sabi nung third gen 2, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper. Prosper, prosperity. Be in health, health, healthy life. And as your soul prosper. Holistic. Ano ang justification? Ano ang biblical evidence? Na gusto ng Diyos na mabuhay ka with prosperity. When Jesus died on the cross of Calvary, hindi lang kasalanan ang kanyang binigyan ng atonement, Hindi lang ang karamdaman ang binigyan niya ng atonement, pati na ang poverty, ang kahirapan, binigyan niya ng atonement. 2 Corinthians chapter 8, verse 9, Jesus Christ, who was so rich, yet became so poor, so that through His poverty, you, you can be rich. Yung salitang rich galing sa ploteo. Ploteo sa Greek word. Ang ibig sabihin, external manifestation of good things or affluence on material possessions. Napakaliwanag pa sa sikat ng araw. Ang ibig sabihin ng rich doon, hindi spiritual. Physical, 
material, financial blessings. Siya'y naging sumpa upang ang sumpa ng kahirapan, the curse of poverty is to be cancelled and destroyed. Hallelujah. Let's read this. Isaiah chapter 1 verse 19. Glory to God. Everybody read. If you are willing and obedient, you will eat the best from the land. It is the perfect will of God to bless you. To bless you with abundant life. You, your wife, your husband, your children, your grandchildren, all your descendants. That is the perfect will of God. But, God is not a dictator. He wants to see your willingness and obedience. If you are willing and obedient, willing ka ba to obey the Lord? Ano anong mga cardinal commandments ng Diyos? Bless Israel, support Israel. Ano pa? Malakay chapter 3? Nagbibigay ka ba ng tithes and offering? Yung tithes and offering, utos ng Diyos yun. Buksan niya natin yung Malakay chapter 3. Everybody read. Will a man rob God? Yet you rob me. But you ask, how do we rob you? In tithes and offering. In tithes and offerings. Verse uh, 9. You are under curse. The whole nation of you. Because you are robbing me. Uh, uh, just one moment please. You are under curse. When we do not pay our tithes. And we do not give offering. With, with, a, with a wholeheartedly. With love. With cheerfulness. We are under curse. Not only our family is under curse, the whole nation. Imagine the whole nation is under curse because you're robbing me. Why the whole nation? It will be a contradiction to God to bless the entire nation inhabited by people who are, not, who are robbers and, pay, and not paying their tithes. Kasi, pag binless ng Panginoon ng todo-todo ang bansang Pilipinas, mabebless din yung mga makasalanan. Yung mga nagnanakaw ng tights and offering. Amen? Very simple. You're under curse. The whole nation of you because you're robbing me. Verse 10, please. Verse 10. Bring the whole tight into the storehouse that there may be food in my house. Test me in this. Test me in this, says the Lord Almighty, and see if I will not throw open the flood gates of heaven and pour out so much blessing that you will not have room enough for it. Wow! Sino may sabi nito? Diyos! Ang Diyos ba kayang magsinungaling? Hindi! Mga magulang at kapalit, hindi pa ako nagyayabang sa inyo. Nang matutuhan namin ito, usapan namin ni Sister Dory, oh, huwag kang papari sa ibang Kristiyano ha. Pag nagkukwenta ng tights, ang tagal kwentahin yung tights. Ultimo mga barya, kunukwenta, i-round off mo na. Hindi bali nang ma masobrang ating maibigay na tights kaysa manakawan natin ng Diyos. Common sense, hindi ba? E si Colgate nga, nung una nagtatight ng 10%, eh. pinayaman ng Panginoon. Eh. Si Mr. Colgate, yung istorya ni Mr. Colgate. Ang ginawa ni Mr. Colgate, binaliktad niya. 90% nang ginawa niya para sa Diyos at saka sa mga humanitarian na activities ng, ng buhay niya. 10% na lang ginawa niya. And naging multi 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 billionaire No one can outgive God. Amen? Praise the Lord. Kaya mga kapatid, uh, mahalin natin ang Panginoon passionately. At sa pagmamahal natin sa, sa Panginoon, along the way, may mga tukso si Satanas. Palimutan natin yung mga tukso niya. Satan, you cannot, you cannot uh, score against me. I would rather obey God rather than men. Whenever there is a conflict or contradiction between your loved ones or even your friends and God, don't hesitate to side with God. Acts chapter 5 verse 29, the apostle said, we would rather obey God rather than men. Do you want to have abundant life? I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper, be in health, as your soul prospereth. Now, before I close, I got a one simple lesson here. The reason why people cannot exercise their faith is because of doubt. Is it really the perfect will of God for me to be blessed physically, mentally, spiritually, at the same time to be blessed financially? 
Is it really the perfect will of God? You check the Bible. The word of God is very clear. God wants you to be blessed. Not only your spirit, not only your soul, but even your finances. Hallelujah. So that you can be a blessing to many. Amen? Now, in exercising our faith, there is one lesson before I close. A leprous person approached Jesus. Lord, if you are willing, I can be clean. You can make me clean. If you are willing. There is only one instance in the Bible that someone approached God with, with uncertainty. Because when we approach God, we should approach God with boldness, with faith. But this man, in, 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 in Mark chapter 1, I think, verse 40, verse 41, Mark chapter 1, a leprous person suffering from leprosy, he approached Jesus, Lord, if you are willing, you can make me clean. Immediately, Jesus corrected him. Immediately, Jesus corrected him. I am willing. Don't doubt my willingness. I am willing to heal you. Never allow any spirit of doubt, even an iota of doubt. When God said it, believe it. And then Jesus said, I am willing. Be cleansed. And immediately, Jesus touched the leprous person and he got miracle healing. I am willing, he said. Be clean. Immediately, the leprosy left him and he was cured. The lesson is, never doubt the promises of God. The promises of God contained in His Word is settled in heaven forever. Psalm 119, verse 89. Heavens and earth shall pass away, but, but God's Word will never pass away. Matthew 24, I think verse 35. Flowers faded, grass withered, but the Word of God stands forever. Isaiah chapter 40, verse 8. And God said in Jeremiah 1, 12, God is watching over his word to ensure its fulfillment. In other translation, God sent his word to ensure its fulfillment. Jeremiah, Jeremiah chapter 1 verse 12. In Amplified Bible and other translation, God is watching over, guarding, guarding every word of God to ensure its fulfillment. And according to full gospel scholars, every promise of God, every word of God, preached or shared and accepted and believed and acted upon that promise of God shall come to pass. That is the meaning of Jeremiah chapter 1, verse 12. Amen? Isang malakas na clap offering to the Lord. Tumayo tayong lahat sandali before I, I close my message with a simple prayer. Hallelujah. Sing the song prayerfully with faith for the glory of God. He and was I, wounded for our transgressions. He was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our Jesus Christ, we are here. Listen carefully, please, before I pray for all your needs. This, this passage in the Bible, Isaiah 53, verse 5, verse 4, verse 5, is an overwhelming evidence that God loves you and me beyond the understanding of human mind. God commended His love for you and me, demonstrated His love for you and me, when, when we were yet sinners, Christ Jesus died for us. Romans chapter 5, verse 8. He demonstrated His love for you when we were still enemies of God. 
That's how God is amazing. And in Romans chapter 8, verse 32, If God did not spare His own Son, but gave Himself for you and me, will He not give all things that you need freely with Him? Wow! Please understand this revelation of the Holy Spirit to St. Paul. Romans chapter 8, verse 32. If God did not spare His own begotten Son, but gave Himself for you and me, as sinners, will He not give all things that you want, that you need from the Lord? Freely with Jesus? I suddenly remember the revelation Smith Wigglesworth received from the Lord. This can reinforce part of your faith. Smith Wilkins' word was used by the Lord after the death of his wife who was the evangelist. And he was used by the Lord so mightily even raising up the dead. He said, The Lord revealed to me and told me to tell people, The willingness of God to answer man's prayer is much greater than the willingness of man to pray. If we internalize this revelation truth, there is no way for Satan to stop the blessings of God to be delivered to all of you, to all of us. Anything. He already gave everything. So beloved, are you in need of something? Are you, I understand there are hundreds, few hundreds who are here invited for the first time. The greatest miracle is the so-called miracle of salvation. That is born again experience. Jesus said, unless a man is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. You may be a member of all kinds of religion and still go to hell. I respect all kinds of religions, but religion is no power to say. What we need is not religion for salvation, but relation right relationship with the living God through the saving knowledge of Jesus who said in John 14 verse 6 he is the way the only way the truth and the life and no one can come to the Father except by Him when we receive Jesus we receive the gift of eternal life not only the right to become children of God but the gift of eternal life First John chapter 5 verse 11 this is the testimony God has given you the uh, eternal life and this life is in His Son he who has the Son of God has life, he, and he who does not have the Son of God does not have life. That's when you receive Jesus. And when you receive Jesus, you become a child of God. Hallelujah. You can enter the inner chamber of God the Father without any permission anymore. Why? Because you are a child of the Father. Jesus said in John 14 verse 14, Anything you ask in my name, I will do it. He did not say, I may do it. He did not say, I shall do it. Jesus said in John 14 verse 14, Anything you ask in my name, I will do it. If there is nothing in the warehouse of heaven, according to that uh, expanded teaching of Dr. Hagen, God will create one just to satisfy the demand of His legitimate child. Amen? Praise God. Raise up your hands, please. Everybody say, Lord Jesus, I believe you. You are the begotten Son of the living God who became flesh, died on the cross of Calvary because of our sins. You shed your precious holy blood for the remission of our sins. I believe in my heart you rose up from the dead for our justification Lord Jesus forgive me for all my sins inherited and committed sins I renounce them all forsake them all in my entire life forever come into my heart I surrender my life to you be my savior be my lord be my God be my healer my deliverer. my deliverer, fill me with your Holy Spirit. Fill me with your Holy Spirit. I want to serve you, to serve you. As, long as, as long as I live. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Do you need healing from the Lord?
God has given you already the gift of eternal life. Now, do you need healing? Jesus is the healer. God revealed himself as Jehovah Rapha, meaning to say, I'm the, good, I'm the Lord that healed thee. I'm the Lord that healed thee. Exodus 15, 26. In Exodus 23, verse 25, Because you worship me, because you shall serve me, I will bless your bread and your water, and I will take away, I will take away, I will take away sicknesses from the midst of thee. Oh, glory be to God. Hallelujah. Kung kayo may sakit, if you are sick, please place one of your hands on any part of your body suffering from any kind of sickness, disease, or pain as point of contact. Hallelujah. And follow me with a simple uh, uh, spiritual warfare. Everybody say, sicknesses and diseases. Sicknesses and diseases. I rebuke you. I rebuke you. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. You are squatters. In my body, in my body. A, temple the a temple of the Holy Spirit. I was healed by the stripes of Jesus. I, of I rebuke you now. I rebuke you. Get out of my body. Get out of my body. In Jesus' name, in Jesus I, was I was healed by His stripes, by His, stripes. By his, wounds. By his wounds, and by the blood of Jesus. The blood of I am redeemed I am from the curse of death. From the curse of poverty, from the curse of sickness, from the curse of the law, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' mighty name. If your loved ones are suffering from any kind of sickness, you can represent Him. Lord, in the name of Jesus, lay your hands upon your people representing their loved ones. Lord God, release, release the surging resurrection power of Jesus upon the bodies of the loved ones of your people who are suffering from sickness, disease, Lord. Lord, I told them a while ago what happened to Moses. Moses did not feel any pain, any sickness, any disease when he went home with the Lord. He did not, uh, you did not borrow any sickness from, the, from Satan, Lord. You just commanded the spirit and the soul to leave the body of Moses. And Moses went with the Lord without any sickness, without any pain, according to the word of God. So therefore, we rebuke any curse of sickness and disease and even the curse of death. We rebuke and cancel them, the curse of spiritual death. We cancel them by the blood of Jesus here in Calvary. And we, are, we let loose the surging resurrection power of Jesus upon the bodies of God's of the loved ones of God's people in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. Lord, not only the spiritual and physical, but also financial. I am rebuking now the curse of poverty, the curse of poverty in the finances of God's people. I am rebuking them by the blood of Jesus, by the blood of Jesus. I command the curse of poverty in the finances of God's people. Get out, get out. Yes, in Jesus' mighty name. For Jesus Christ was so rich, yet became so poor, so that through his poverty we can be rich. 2 Corinthians 8, 9, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. In the name of Jesus, Lord, we are commanding now the coming of the blessings to your people, and blessings are overflowing. Receive abundant living. Receive, be blessed abundantly. Be blessed abundantly. Receive, receive, receive the overflowing blessings from God's throne. Yes, Lord, bless your people with all heavenly blessings. Manifest, Lord, all the benefits of Calvary. Thank you, Lord. You came to give life and have it more abundantly. You came to destroy the works of the devil, Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Everybody, exercise your faith. Raise up your hands and everybody say, In the mighty name of Jesus. I bind the works of the devil in my life, in my finances, in my family. I rebuke all the works of the devil in Jesus' name. Get out. Out in Jesus' name. My life is redeemed from the curse of the law. My family is redeemed from the curse of the law. My loved ones are redeemed from the curse of the law. The blood covering of Jesus is upon me, upon my loved ones, upon my family. In Jesus' name, I receive all the benefits of Calvary. I will serve the Lord. I will serve the Lord with faithfulness. 
with willingness, with obedience, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. We praise you. We give back to you the glory. In Jesus' name, everybody agree and say, Amen and Amen. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Partner with us by sending your donations to Light TV Ministries Foundation Incorporated. Bank details: Bank of the Philippine Islands. Account name: Light TV Ministries Foundation Incorporated. Account number: zero zero four zero three one zero zero six four zero one. Swift code: B O P I P H M M. Manila, Philippines. China Banking Corporation. Account name, Light TV Ministries Foundation Incorporated. Account number, 1025-00001426. Swift code, CHBKPHMM, Manila, Philippines. Thank you for partnering with Light TV, God's channel of blessings.